you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own first. In order to begin to solve this question, we need to take a look at the equations that give us the combined capacitance of both parallel arrangements of capacitors as well as series arrangements of capacitors. So for the parallel case, the total capacitance is given by the sum of the individual capacitances. And then for the series arrangement, we have this sort of reciprocal equation. Now, we were told that the parallel capacitance was 9 picofarads. So we can actually plug 9 in for this C parallel. Now for the other equation, before we go ahead and plug in the value for the series capacitance, we actually want to try to isolate this term first. And that's a bit of a challenge. What we're going to have to do, because we're trying to add fractions here, is establish a common denominator. Now right now the denominators are not common. This is C1 and this is C2, but we can make them common if we multiply this denominator by C1, and also multiply up here in the numerator, and then multiply this denominator by C2, and then also the numerator. And what that's going to do is it's going to find a common denominator, which will be C1, C2. And then once we have the common denominator, we can actually combine the two fractions into a single fraction. And finally, there's a neat little trick here. You'll notice on the left side we have just a single fraction, and also on the right side we have a single fraction. What we can do is we can actually invert the fractions. So we can actually swap the numerator and denominator on the right side and do the same thing to the fraction on the left side. And once we've done that, we can get rid of this division by 1. So we have now solved the equation for the series capacitance. Let's remember that the question told us that that value was 2 picofarads, so we can plug 2 in now for the C series. Okay, so next it's going to be useful to solve the first equation for C1. And of course we can do that by subtracting C2 from both sides of that equation. And next what we can do is take that expression for C1 and substitute it into both here in this equation and also right there. Next, we can distribute C2 backwards into the parentheses. It will also be useful to put the 2 over a 1, and what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. So we'll multiply the 2 times this term right here, and then we will also multiply this top term by 1. Maybe we'll put the result over here on the left. We can next distribute the 2 to all three terms inside the parentheses. And since we have a variable squared, that means that we have a quadratic equation, and so we're going to have to gather all terms over to one side. In this case, we can gather everything to the left side so that the right side will become zero. So what we'll have to do is subtract the 9c2 from both sides of the equation, and then also add the c2 squared term to both sides of the equation. We'll come up here to show that result. Notice where we got the minus 9c2 from. That's because the 2c2 and the minus 2c2 had actually canceled out, and that left behind just this minus 9c2. So that's why we have it here in the formula. Now, this equation turns out to be factorable, though the one that you may have with the given numbers, if you're doing this from an online homework system, may not be factorable. If it's not factorable, then you'd have to use the quadratic equation. You'd have to do the negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And if you did it that way, you'd have to note that the a value is 1, the b is negative 9, and then the c is positive 18. We'll actually go ahead and solve it this way, since in some cases factoring would not be an option. So we'll plug into the quadratic formula. And we end up with the square root of 9. That can be simplified to just 3. And so we're going to get two answers, which makes sense because we're looking for two capacitances. So we're going to have 9 plus 3 all divided by 2 and 9 minus 3 all divided by 2. And then this one will be 12 over 2, which is just 6. And this one will be 6 over 2, which is just 3. And so those would be the final answers. We would have 6 picofarads for one capacitor and also 3 picofarads for the other capacitor. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you'd like to, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.